Holy crap. Welcome back to Adventures in Reach. I am on the world's most popular small sailboat, the Sunfish, on the world's largest lake, Lake Superior, heading to the United States' least visited national park, Isle Royale. And I am in the middle of the crossing. The closest land I'm guessing is like eight or nine miles away. I'm 11 and a half miles from Grand Portage where I left from and I'm 11 and a half miles from Isle Royale. So I've been out here so far for four hours. The wind was great when I left and then it just kind of died off and I get, keep getting these little spurts of, of speed and wind. But uh, yeah, it's going to be a cool trip. So I actually started this uh, four days later than what I was planning. So the winds are light and variable and coming from the east of so that direction that I'm going to be going against. But I'm going to go out there and see if those winds are any better. Well, pretty discouraging. I've been out here for an hour and 20 minutes. Now the first 20 minutes or so was getting out of the harbor about a half a mile. After that, uh, just trying to go into the wind. I was just using my wind meter and it's averaging about 4.8, five mile an hour. And so I'm really only gaining about two and a half miles an hour. So when you figure it's a 23 mile crossing, according to my GPS from the marina to Isle Royale, and you figure it's about 30, 31 miles when you have to tack. By my math, you know, that's like 12 hours. And unfortunately, I think I'm gonna have to turn around here and head back in. Like I said, the winds tomorrow are supposed to be from the west. And so I'll just uh, head out in the morning and hopefully just book it. It is what it is. All right, we'll catch you tomorrow. Good luck, my friend. I'm sure you'll have fun. Yeah. I'm on Lake Superior now. <laughs> I hope the wind is worth the wait. The thunderstorm threat cleared and uh, I've got some you know, 5 to 15 mile an hour winds predicted, and then 10 to 20 in the afternoon with uh, waves calm to two feet. I'm kind of going sideways to the waves here, but I'm, you know, I've got this mostly westerly wind and I'm heading to the east, so this is perfect. I'm moving at about six miles an hour and I've got 23 miles heading out into the fog. I'm following my deck compass here. So I, I just kind of got my bearing with the GPS and then I'm just looking at the sun and the deck compass to keep me on course. Uh, hoping to get in, you know, a couple hours after lunch kind of deal. And then I'll see if I can do another 24 miles potentially if the wind keeps up and, you know, make up my missed day from yesterday. Well, I went from cruising along at six or seven miles an hour to not really moving. So the wind kind of died on me, but I've still got the waves and oh man, I am not feeling so hot. It's just bobbing around, not really feeling motion in one particular direction. I'm just getting seasick. Um, not feeling so good. Barf, man. I've been trying to, you know, look at the land and uh, have a 
point of reference I've been filling my hat up with cold water I'm getting hot you know uh, partly probably from feeling seasick so I do know getting in the water helps so I'm gonna go ahead and jump in the water here and just um, <laughs> hope that improves things and let the rope go oh oh Oh. oh, at least it's cooler. I can't recall ever getting seasick on a sunfish before, uh, but it's usually, you know, pretty windy when I go, and uh, not, not just like this. So, yeah, that's pretty gross. Uh, Makes me question doing a long ass crossing if I feel like I need to puke the whole time. I'm at Isle Royale now, and there's cool coastlines here. Uh, you know, some little caves and arches and all that. There's good stuff to look at. I, I've had a really long day, and I'm actually still kind of seasick from earlier. It just hasn't gone away. Um, I've got a little bit of a wacky idea. I was just hoping that I can get a little boost here, another extra mile an hour or something would be awesome. It's certainly not perfect. You can see it kind of billowing up there in the back a little bit. And sometimes it's opened up to two or three times this size. But in general, it's just kind of been like this. And you know, I think if you kind of add up the length of it, it's probably adding, you know, an extra six square feet, maybe a little more made it to camp uh decent beach here i'm gonna show you what i found going up here there's nobody else here but what there is you can see right here and right here is a better one it's a moose print i don't see any moose but uh you never know and then that's all the campsite is, just a real makeshift fire ring. Time to unload and get this thing up on shore. Well, it's pretty calm, so I'll derig in a sec, but now it's time to send a spot notice to my wife. Uh, if you haven't used these before, essentially, you just turn it on. Um, so my OK message basically means that it's just an update or at the end of the day, I'm at camp. So there's four messages on here. So there's the OK. There's uh, this one is going to be I'm late. And then uh, this is a track one. I'm not using that. 
but then I've got this helping hand one that's you know I need help but it's not emergency and then this SOS obviously I need help right away but this is one of the original one of the second generation I think so it has GPS and then this other one will start blinking uh, once it's sent and then I'll just let it go for a few minutes after that to be sure that it's it's gone and uh, uh, that should be it and I'll be good and they'll know I'm safe so Day two of this wacky sunfish sailing adventure. So I did 40 miles yesterday and uh, today they're predicting two to four foot waves building to seven feet potentially. Uh, so that's a little crazy. On the bright side, I found some thimbleberries. Ah, oh, just dropped it. All right, here we go. There's got to be more. Here we go. Apparently these little flies love them too. Thimbleberries, they're like raspberries, except they're even better. I think the only reason these aren't sold um, is because they just, they just fall apart really easily. They wouldn't last for shipping at all. But they're amazing. I wasn't really sure, you know, where to go to the bathroom. So I was going to take this bar. I think it's from a, like a pin from a ship or something. And then on my way wandering back, I realized there's actually an outhouse over here. And uh, so that was an awesome little find. So I didn't have to dig a hole. And the curious thing here is that when we get up close to the outhouse, you can see there's a trail closed sign. So I'm not sure if this campsite is closed or what's going on, but I guess I wouldn't be surprised. So anyway, I might have just stayed at a closed campsite, but it is what it is. Eh? Alright, so ready to get on the water. Like I said, seven foot waves later, so I gotta get going because there's no way the sunfish is going on seven foot waves. The waves are coming in quite a bit further than yesterday. Yesterday they were really down, uh, not even coming under the boat. Uh, you know, they're back there and now they're coming up under the boat, so pretty uh, decent evidence that uh excuse me there's gonna be bigger waves probably more wind out there like i said predicting seven up to seven foot waves later in the day uh two to four in the morning early afternoon so i'm gonna try to get out there it's a little later than i wanted to start uh, but the other thing when you're doing these trips keep in mind I, and i kind of struggle with this too but keep in mind that you have options right so i don't want to but I could come back here. I could hang out here for the whole time and then just, you know, zip back across. You know, I could, I could pick my way down to hugging in and then to brace and then back, you know? So I could really break this up and not do the whole island. There's, there's no requirement that I do it. It's just that I would like to. And so I'm going to try it. I have several days to do it, um, but we'll see how it goes. You know, if I'm, if it's just kind of chaotic out there, especially around that point, because there's kind of a wind line out there, and I need to go into that wind line and, and be going into the wind. So if it's too chaotic, too dangerous, then you know I may I may do just that or just come back to here. The only problem with being here, as you can see, is that I don't have a dock. And so if the waves do come in further and it starts hitting the boat, then I might be starting to damage the boat. Uh, so I could probably rig something up, pulley or whatnot, and get it further off, grab some logs for, um, you know, kind of rolling it on as well as the boat bumpers or uh, fenders. But uh, it, it's just, it's options, right? And the other thing to keep in mind, this is where I feel good that I'm, I'm wearing my dry suit. I wasn't planning to wear it the whole time. I was planning mainly for the crossings, but with big waves predicted, there's no way I'm going without it. That would not be very intelligent. 
Um, and the other thing, like I said, I have that bucket for, um, you know, slowing down my progress. I also have my hammock. Now it sounds goofy, but if I'm going downwind and this sail is too much, I'm catching up to waves, diving in, risking pitch pulling where the, the bow catches and the rest of the boat kind of flips. Um, I could put in my hammock, put my hammock up on the mast as I've, I've considered, and then that would drastically slow me down. Uh, but I'd still have some control going downwind. So anyway, some thoughts, some options, be creative. Uh, don't get pigeonholed into one thing and uh, get out there. It's done about four miles today and uh, it's going slow. Some decent waves, bigger than yesterday. Uh, they're consistently two or three feet and then I'll get some coming through that are four feet, maybe even pushing five every once in a while uh, but they're spaced out enough and um, you know just not quite too steep so because they're spaced out and all they're they're okay I'm, I'm good with it I'm feeling comfortable out here the boat's performing pretty well uh, I've got you know I have the two halyards I, I have a high wind halyard video if you're wanting to check out how I do it and so I've got it on my lower setting. And so it makes a big difference. I'm not even really hiking out much. Uh, here comes another wave. This big one. Whoop. Ooh. Whoop. <laughs> yeah, you get a couple big sets in there and um, they're kind of fun. Uh, it feels a lot different to be close to land today. You know, it's, it's a lot less concerning you know when you're when you know you have something that you could in theory swim to uh, so yeah I just feel a lot more out there uh, vulnerable when you're 11 miles from land like yesterday so and don't worry about a thing cause every little thing is gonna be all right Check out this frog. Here he goes, here he goes. Oh, here you go, buddy. Woo. Well, welcome to the uh, waves of Superior. <laughs> I'll show you some big ones here in a minute. They keep rolling by, we get big sets. So, uh, it's, it's not very gusty, so it's actually pretty doable. Uh, the winds are consistent from the same direction, similar uh, speed, and I'm actually making pretty good headway. And uh, the waves, the waves are get, are big, getting bigger. But I mean, I would take big waves and constant wind over, uh, you know, just gusty wind and anything else. This is actually pretty doable. So I want to show you my halyard. I've got a high wind halyard video. And if you can see up here, maybe not, but there's two halyards. Now the blue one, the blue one is attached up there. It's actually stretched a little bit, but that one holds the bottom spar. Let me show you right above my gear. Okay, the other halyard holds it up about a foot higher. And so when I'm, uh, when I'm going in lighter wind, I'll put that so I have more space to duck under when tacking. So the other thing that's going on here is I've got my weight towards the back. So these bags up here are really close. Uh, my sleeping bag, sleeping pad, tent right here. And then the stuff in the back here, I think like I showed earlier, <clears throat> that's my food and so it seems to be working out it ends up that I'm, I'm actually making enough enough headway that I'm gonna go to Bell Island instead and that's that's another like six miles I think I have to check but yeah it's good consistent wind the other thing if you're enjoying this video, you're liking what you're seeing, uh, if you like the tips I've given you, then please subscribe. 
Uh, subscribing certainly gives me a lot of motivation to keep doing this stuff. So if you want to see more of this, please subscribe. And then, of course, share with your friends that would benefit from this as well. In the next video, you'll see big waves, what your sunfish can handle, and some frustrations and how to work through that to keep your trip on a happy note.